or good morning, or good evening, wherever you are on this beautiful planet. It is me, it is me, it is Cardi B, and you are watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online, powered by Twitch. Chat, you're cute, you're beautiful, you even got Maikuyama's blessing. You have done so much this week. And I'm proud to announce that your generous donations have met that link to the past any percent run, which I am so, so excited to see. Coming up in just a couple of games now. You know, more than that, you all have raised over $2 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. You know, when I was a young boy growing up on the streets of Atlanta, I only had one wish. I remember looking up at the stars at night thinking, gosh, I wish that we could raise $3 million for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Well, I'm an adult now, but chat, can we do it? Can we make the boyhood dream come true? It's up to you. I want your donations, your haikus, your poems, your puns, your apologies, your favorite evolutions. I want it all. But what I really want is for y'all to get those hype emotes out so that we can finish the fight with my favorite Spartan, John Halo. Y'all, I want to see those clap emotes in the chat for Halo Combat Evolved on Legendary with Kronos. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Kronos, and I'm here to play some Halo Combat Evolved. I'm a Halo and Elder Scrolls speedrunner, and with me I have Goat Rope as my commentary buddy. Hey y'all, my name is Goat Rope. Um, I'm a long time on and off Halo speedrunner, emphasis on the off. Um, I had the privilege of running this game at SGDQ in 2014, and I am so excited to see Kronos play it today because he's going to do it so much faster and so much better than I ever possibly could. I'm excited to watch it happen. Okay, and I will start in just a bit. Let me get out, and once this cutscene is over, then time will start. And so will the tricks. <laughs> uh, we're immediately jumping into an out-of-bounds double on, teleport, I believe, because, uh, you know, walking around through doors is for fools. Oh, first try. Yeah, so nice. you're going to see a, a lot of out-of-bounds shenanigans here. Where you're going to see a lot of, we just call them teleports. Really short version is that if you can intersect yourself with some geometry in a weird way, the game will just bloop, teleport you <laughs> maybe a meter away, maybe a hundred meters away. Uh, it's faster than walking, so we're going to do it a bunch, even if it's confusing for you to watch. Sorry. Uh, that was so amazing to get first try right there. Yeah, that is that is not a trick that people do in full game runs very often. So trying it on a marathon stage is, I gotta say, pretty impressive. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. Okay, so yeah, this is the Pillar of Autumn first level of the run. It's pretty simple overall. You would think with just running through hallways, killing enemies, but. It has some of the most tricky, like, tricks, so to say, with... Oh, boy. Hey, oh, Marathon Luck, that happened to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. the triple elite door. Very, very fun. It's a great opportunity to describe... Uh, you know, I'm assuming most people have played Halo and Legendary, and if you have, you probably know that there's a lot of variance in what enemies it actually throws at you. Sometimes you get three elites, sometimes you get zero. It doesn't... You can't really predict it, you can't really control it. Um, and sometimes it just happens, and you got to deal with it as a legendary runner. So second try is not bad. Yeah. We're through here, and as Kronos was mentioning, for a long time, for like, I don't know, 19 years, 20 years, this level was just running through hallways. Maybe there's a grenade jump here and there, the but uh, things have changed in the last year or two. Uh, people have gotten a bit crazy with the out-of-bounds technology, as you already saw, and you're going to see in a minute. Yeah, so this next stuff is just killing enemies, running through hallways, trying not to die. There's a little bit of trigger <laughs> manipulation here. If he kills too many enemies in this room, a second wave will spawn, so he wants to run through killing as few as possible. You can actually get bad luck if the elites or the marines throw a grenade and kill too many. You get an extra wave and they just instantly nuke you. Okay, so we throw a plasma, try to kill these guys. This elite is Ooh, not cooperating. Not Let's get a yeah, checkpoint here. 
This is an important checkpoint because we're about to see that cool. We're going to see a shield bump, which again is just intersecting the player with some geometry and getting teleported upwards for some reason. Um, oh, the, the geometry and choice is this little stationary shield you see in the next room. He's going to shoot it with the plasma weapon enough times for it to de like power down. And then seven seconds later, it's going to power back up. And as it powers up, it's going to intersect with the Master Chief. And if he's positioned himself correctly, it's a very, very precise position. It should eject him vertically into the ceiling. And then hopefully, uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, 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 nice. That's great. All right, so he's got the checkpoint out of bounds. There's going to be a bit of out of bounds platforming. Um, this is a trick that would not have been possible on the original Xbox, on the original PC release. Uh, you, you can, when you're out of bounds in the original version of this game, everything is totally invisible except for the last room that you're in. So all of this geometry he's climbing across would be totally invisible. You could not do any of this. Um, but with the 2011 anniversary remake, they added these new graphics, and I guess they modified the rendering engine in some way that when you're in new graphics, you can actually see out of bounds geometry. Here comes another teleport, lining it up. Oh, first Ooh, try. Let's into go. The maintenance I'm home. so awesome. happy about that. That's good. That's <laughs> not an easy trick at all. Like, I think the only reason it gets done is because it's like three minutes into the run. But man, that's sick. If, if, if you watch Halo speedruns on Twitch, you're going to see a lot of resetting of this level just to that trick. So that's super sick to hit first try in a, in a marathon. Yeah, it is very difficult. All, a lot of these teleports are basically pixel precise. It's not really yep. a pixel, but it's based off of a lot of factors like your mouse sensitivity in game and your camera like position. It's very, very yeah, there, tricky. There are some teleports that you cannot do on certain mouse sensitivities because the position is so precise, you literally can't get the position with your mouse because your sensitivity is wrong. It's, it took us a while to figure that out, but once we did, there's like a, there's a list of approved sensitivities that you can do each trick with. It's kind of ridiculous. That's POA. That was a totally solid POA. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Just that one def, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get one death out of the way. Chill the marathon nerves, you know? This yeah. is Halo. <laughs> This is a slower paced level than POA, but it's not as slow paced as it used to be. It used to just be, oh yeah, here's some combat, here's some driving down a hill. But there's actually some crazy stuff, like we did not have a uh, drop skip back when I when I ran this game. Uh, there's like, I don't know, fancier strats for the, the final areas. It's cool. Yeah, so we did a grenade jump here and that skips a wave of enemies that happens here, along with some Banshee spawns. So, yeah, there's basically nothing at this very start section, which makes this the perfect time for some donations. Yep. Thank you very much. I got you covered. We've got $25 from Sleek. Best of luck, Kronos. You do a ton for our community, and I hope for first try Dark Door. Did someone <laughs> say haloruns.com? Hmm. That sounds like a good website. Should people go there? Absolutely. If you're interested in Halo, or runs, or the combination thereof, we, we've got what you need at HaloRuns.com. <laughs> and we've got $117 from Deltroy3030, starting off a $117 donation train for the upcoming Halo run. Thanks, runners and the GDQ team for another fantastic event. I love it. Uh, so Kronos is going to be killing some, some Covenant here, and afterwards, he's going to be doing some, we're going to say, non-canonical behavior. Uh, you're not going to read about this in the books. Uh, he's going to start killing his allies. Oh, they, oh they've died on their own. Um, <laughs> it's good when your allies die in this game. If you're speedrunning, there are a lot of events in the game that only happen after Marines have had some kind of conversation. They, they have to talk to each other before the level progresses. But if they're dead, it just skips that. Um, so we got lucky there, and they just died in the fight. Um, but you will see Kronos slaying his allies this run. I'm sorry if there's any fans of the UNSC Marines in the chat. This is going to be an ugly one for you. Yeah, quite a lot. <laughs> Very yeah. unfortunately. Unprecedented number. Um, so he's working on... There's going to be five. There's supposed to be five dropships in a row here. They just arrive and you kill the enemies. Uh, there's, there's a glitch where if you kill them fast enough and like that's really, really fast, then one of them will fail to spawn because it actually reuses one of the dropships. So it's like trying to spawn a new dropship using the old one that's still in use and it fails because it's still in use. And so it just skips to the next dropship. It's a big, it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds of time save. It's great. 
Yeah, so all of these are some pretty precise grenade lineups. So I have to be very sure that they're all perfect enough. However, some of these enemies can spawn randomly. Yep. So based off how they spawn, the trick might not work. So hopefully this is good. Looks good. We got one radar dot. Ooh. Uh, Two no, enemies is enough. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, the, there is, again, a lot of randomness in this, uh, like, the the positioning of the enemies. So which enemies in which slots is a random. Uh, and the timing with which they jump out is random. So when you try uh, to throw a predictive grenade, ooh, it doesn't it, always oh, work. Shoot. It might ooh, have been a good point. idea to revert there because I was super late for this yeah. drop ship. So now I'm going to have to like All kill right. everything manually. Yeah, they're going to be some Very... improvisation here. This is a deviation from like the world record run. You will see this happen faster in the world record run. But hey, it's, it's a marathon, so we're doing it live. And uh, this is... I think I think some people complain that legendary runs don't have enough like real combat. You know, like you remember playing Halo as a kid, like yeah, like we actually fought the enemies. Uh, Kronos has to do that now because he's he's in a marathon setting and things have gone slightly awry, but he's handling uh, it pretty no. well so far. Uh, oh, we need a plasma pistol. Plasma pistol. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, uh, that's oh. really really rough here. Yeah. yeah. That'll happen. This is uh, this is Halo speedrunning. When things go south, they go very south, uh, and you just got to adapt. So yeah, I'm it believing. doesn't help that I am very low on ammo here for my plasma pistol. Yeah, this game was clearly designed around having a plasma weapon at the ready for elites. It's basically unwinnable if you don't. Uh, so hopefully we can work that out. Oh, these elites are not cooperating as well. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure all of the uh, Halo speedrunners in the chat who are watching are just really feeling Kronos right now. This is <laughs> this is not the, <laughs> the scenario you want to. <laughs> okay, yeah. let me let me actually do this. This is very sure. casual strats right now. Hey, I have whatever, to kill this guy, done. so he is not helping. And let there me try to get some more ammo here. <laughs> oh boy, this is very. Hey, it's all good. Not good. <laughs> so once this is all over, we're going to get a Warthog. We're going to meet Echo 419. We're going to go for a little drive, and that'll all be fun. We'll get to hear uh, everybody's favorite Halo 1 quote. On Jackal. That's better. And nice one more set of enemies. It's already way out. So I have to kill them here. Yeah. There's like four grunts and jackal and an elite. Yep. Um, a, oh, lot of the, pistol, please. a lot of the challenge in go. combat in this game, we kind of trivialize by like being there when the enemies spawn. Nice job, dude. <laughs> um, and if you're there when the enemies spawn, you can just throw a grenade on the ground and instantly kill like four or five at a time. But as soon as you're a couple seconds late and they hop out of the dropship and spread out and find cover and like start using their AI to be strategic about it, like it gets real hairy. So I, I got to say, I, I don't envy the position that the game just decided to throw you into, but I think you handled it well. And we're through it. We're done. Yeah. We're on to the next part of Halo, which is awesome. Definitely one of the harder parts of combat in this game, especially because okay. there's some small things like the plasma pistol tracking isn't the best in this mm -hmm. uh, game compared to like Halo 2, for instance. Halo 2 has really good plasma pistol tracking. Yep, the, the then, noob combo. <laughs> yeah, the pistol itself also has a standard spread, so it is not always guaranteed to land the headshot. Yep. Now, I do believe we have time for a couple... After uh, the funny line here, uh, we have time for a couple donations. I've got you covered. Uh, we've got $50 from Navy Rymar, who says, This money is not a natural formation. Someone donated, so it must go to preventing cancer. 
Thank you, Kronos, for making the most important game of my childhood go fast. And we've got $25 from Cyberbot X. I heard something about John Halo finishing the fight. This is so he can do that. I'm sure he can finish the fight if we get the 20G mode in Tetris the Grand Master. Wouldn't you agree? We are on our way to meeting that incentive. We've got just $6,500 out of 75,000. So please get those donations in if you want to see some hot Tetris action. There you go, we got Warthog Fling coming up here, classic trick. Just a little mini physics glitch where when you're exiting a vehicle, you are invincible to vehicle damage. You can't be killed by getting hit by a vehicle. So if you hop out of a vehicle and have that vehicle hit you, you can get bumped. And that gets used a couple times in this run. Hitting the light bridge button in a way that doesn't trigger the cutscene because we skipped a little hallway that had another trigger in it that was necessary. More driving, uh, more donations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot going on. Sure, we've got tons of them. We've got $117 from Power Armor 13. Hey, Kronos, glad to see you at GDQ to prevent cancer. Have a good run and finish the fight. $25 from Reese. The grenade jumps in this game take it to the next level. L literally. <laughs> yeah, absolutely they do. $117 from Dr. Byrne. My sister and I played Halo Combat Evolved Co-op as one of our very first video games. She's now battling cancer, and I'm donating in her honor to help siblings everywhere. Sending love and strength to everyone. Also, sis, you get first pick of rocket launcher or sniper rifle next time. What an honor. Speaking of sniper rifle, we'll be yeah. grabbing one right here, which is pretty nice. We'll be using oh, yeah. it for the rest of this fight. And we will be going to clear these areas if Dodo <laughs> wants to explain. Yeah, so uh, I hinted at the uh, horrors earlier that the Marines are going to uh, experience. So the, the lore, what's happening here in this story is that we are rescuing three crashed Marine like escape pods. Um, but I guess the Bungie designers in 2000 were like, you know, it feels bad if like the Marines die and it just fails the mission. So if the player does their best and really tries and then the players, the, the Marines all die anyway, let's just let them progress through the level. Um, we can abuse that trigger and we can just accelerate the failing of the mission. And uh, once all these Marines are dead, Cortan just goes, well, we tried our best, let's move on. And the level continues and it's fine. It doesn't care that you killed them all. Um, we're gonna do that for two of the three locations. And then in the third location, you do have to legitimately save everybody. Or you, you at least, you have to kill the Covenant. If all the Marines die, the level still ends, but it's not fast. So sadly, the Marines are not gonna make it out of this one. That's one, one area down. We're going to the, the, the rock slide area next where the sniper rifle, the aforementioned sniper rifle is gonna be very useful. We already saw what happens when you try to fight Covenant up close. Uh, this is, you now know why we're using the sniper rifle here. Although you're not actually fighting that many Covenant. I think the Covenant are mostly occupied with killing the Marines here, which is handy for us because we don't have to kill as many of them. Yeah. So we just kind of wait here for these Marines to fight. And then because they're engaged when we shoot them, they don't get angry at us, which is just very important. <laughs> and there's a trigger he has to hit by driving into the rocks here. And this section is actually faster on Legendary than on Easy, because on Easy, the Marines are really strong and tough, and the Covenant are weak and sad, and they, the fight goes in the Marines' favor. But on Legendary, the Marines are pretty ineffectual, and they just fall over dead, other than the three that are up top. So there were a bunch of Marines in there, they just died automatically, and the level is hopefully progressing. There's a bunch of shenanigans that can happen, because we're like, we're doing weird things with the triggers here, and you can softlock here, you can like break the, I don't a lot can go wrong. Uh, yeah. So far, <laughs> things are looking good. Uh, we don't have Agam Rage, which is good. Now we're just so. gonna clear out these guys. Yep, just a matter of killing everybody. He's gonna kill enough Covenant, and then a dropship's gonna land, kill those Covenant, and then we get rescued. We move on to, I think, my favorite level, the Truth and Reconciliation. It's also top the two, scariest one, so <laughs> yeah, hopefully fine. it all goes well. It's gonna go great. You got your bad luck out of the way early. Second dropship, or yeah, only dropship should be coming in now. Hopefully we're there in time. This I was talking earlier should about be like good. being there for the spawns. You can place grenades. Oh, yeah, nice multi kill. 
Oh, not only the last. So the dialogue we're looking for is that's the last of them. We'll hear Cortana say that. Yep. There, there you go. go. So the level's going to complete. Pretty good. Super, totally solid second half. Um, yeah. <laughs> now it's truth and reconciliation. I, got, I, I love TNR. I love TNR. It's got like it's got the best Halo song, Undercover of Night. It's got I think for Halo speedrunning, it's got the perfect combination of like it's got legitimately hard legendary combat. It's got out of bounds tricks. It's got grenade jumps. It's got like weird trigger manipulation to skip dialogue. And it's it's just got everything cram packed into one little like. I don't know. Little perfect little package. It's it's wonderful. Yep. So I'm gonna oh, be I, doing <laughs> I just remember you're doing the hard version. You're yeah. doing the hard version. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um bad news once again for the Marine fans in the chat. Um Chrono Master Chief has gone rogue. He's gonna pull a one eighty at the start of the level and immediately blow up every single Marine on this Pelican with him. Um yeah. It's because difficult to explain, but <laughs> because a few minutes from now, Master Chief wants to ride a gravity lift, and the Marines need to have a conversation about the gravity lift first. So, for that reason, they're all getting nuked, which makes things hard because you don't have Marines on your side now. Uh, this combat here is insane. We in speedruns we used to stop and like kill everything and then like move through, but this is this is 2021, and we're speedrunning Halo, and we just run past everything. Um, if he kills the elites first with the sniper rifle, then the grunts have a very high chance of getting feared. They just run around going, ah, this is scary, instead of actually uh, shooting you. Plasma. Okay. Oh, no chain reaction. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so should once these enemies are here, oh, he just jumped off the cliff. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we should get a checkpoint here. A couple snipes and then probably just going to, oh. Oh, that, that okay. jackal's really bad. That's unfortunate. Oh, oh, okay. Kronos. Okay, we got I, the checkpoint. I got it, I got it. No it's alert. Good. We're good, we're good. Yeah. Oh, so that the, uh, didn't die. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So recently, the uh, official Halo Xbox Twitter account tweeted out a, a funny picture of a keyboard where most of it is just a W key, and I think that that but that keyboard would be very appropriate for a Halo speedrun. Um, casual play, you do a lot of waiting, a lot of lurking, a lot of flanking. Not in not in a speedrun. We're literally just. Of course, right yeah, now we're gonna the check. There we yeah, go. Of course. <laughs> right as I say it, the checkpoint decides to not come. We have to go to W. But once again, this is another area with a ton of enemies in it that are all really strong and want to kill you. But we're just going to run right through. This is called Camo List. There's a there's an invisibility power up in this area that speedrunners used to go and get. It used to be really nice to take a little detour and get the invisibility, and you could just like sneak around. Not anymore. We just run past everything and hope that you can hope that you can frag out. This is the grab yeah, some area. some very difficult combat right here. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, no shields, low health, just barreling through. Just believe okay. it. Okay, don't kill me. I'm one red. <laughs> I'm <laughs> juking everything. <laughs> That's fine. The what the, the last red good. health bar is, is enormous. Uh, not a lot of people know that, but not all health bar chunks are created equal. The first <laughs> one is like effectively zero, <laughs> and the last one's huge. You got that there. was good. very, very close. Yeah. So this is another example of uh, grenading enemies as they spawn into the map. There's going to be eight waves on the gravity lift here. Uh, a perfect clear is just eight nades oh, and eight snipes, okay. but perfect clears are not easy to come by. Oh, that elite's really... Okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm, I need, I'm just, I'm like, so spreading for jackal. you. This jackal. Yeah, he wants it. Oh! <laughs> okay, okay. Back on track, back on track. Okay, I need yeah. to delay killing that guy, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. can do this. Oh, oh, you got a marine grenade. That's perfect. God, this area is so hectic. Yeah. You'll notice that he's actually doing something called backpack reloading. Uh, if you press reload twice and then switch your weapon, it'll actually continue to reload Christmas while you're scrub. using your other weapon. Scrub, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which lets him have more uptime on the sniper rifle, which is very important for a fight like this. I'm literally like clutching. <laughs> this this fight is so <laughs> stressful, yeah. but you handled that well. That was great. Okay, we are good. Very efficient. And Artists now, are oh done. no, hunters. Yeah, there you go. Hunters are easy. Okay, I didn't jinx you by saying they're easy. That's good. <laughs> and now this is where that dialogue would happen, or no, the the another pelican would arrive to drop off more marines. 
there's some kind of slow thing that happens that doesn't yeah. happen because it's he killed normally all the takes a minute for the Marines to drop off their troops. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we're so, right into another amazing trick. Yeah. All right. So this this is belly skip. This fight. This room is supposed to have this really long, drawn out like wave fight before you get out. But if he goes up to this object and explodes it in a certain way, he gets glitched inside of it. And then if he moves around inside of it in a certain way, and then pushes the direction, he's going to get one of our famous Halo teleports up into the ceiling. Oh, we got a checkpoint. So we get to try this, this a couple this times. This is why we wait for the checkpoint. Yeah, checkpoint manipulation is a very important part of Halo speedrunning. You ex yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. Nice. So he's out of bounds. He's standing on a one pixel invisible ledge and is just tightrope walking out of bounds to the to the rest of the level while the, the, once again the sad Marines, at least we're not killing them this time, but we are leaving them alone against legendary Covenant and you can hear them not having a great time. Um, so this is another trick that was technically possible, but was way harder on uh, the original Halo uh, because these out-of-bounds visuals did not exist. You were doing this totally blind. And people had setups to like make this platforming happen um, on the old graphics, but it's so much easier with the new graphics. And we just skipped a whole bunch of combat. That's like a five-minute skip. Um, just hopping out of bounds and skipping all sorts of things. And skipping a lot of RNG, actually. The, one of the rooms he skipped used to be called the RNG room. Uh, and we don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah, and now we're going right immediately to another uh, trick right here. Yeah, that's TNR. This is, are we doing quad stack? Is that just yep, normal we now? we are doing right, quad stack. In my day, it was a triple stack. Now it's a quad stack. Um, so there's a power up called an overshield that he's going to pick up. Once you pick it up, you've got like two or three seconds of invincibility. And if you throw enough grenades into a tight little pile, stick yourself, grab the OS and jump. You can just Ooh. launch yourself to the top of the roof. That you hit the ceiling. That was a big blast. Yeah, that was yeah, really the, clean. The yeah, you get you can get a very differently sized blast there based on posit like where the grenades land, what timing they land with. So you'll see good runners will be more much more consistent at having them land in a really tight bundle at the exact same time. So they all blow up right at the same time. They push you, and that that was just perfectly done. Oh, Goldie's being what are cool. You doing? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Elite pathing is like imperfect, I will say. But that was good. That now frag just... they did a lot of work there. It killed everything. That was like, great, yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. When you throw a grenade at an enemy, there's just like a dice roll that happens about whether they're going to dodge it or not. And I think we got a lucky roll there. Everyone just stood on it and died. Once again, holding W as we jump over enemies. Uh, we're making our way to the prison. Oh, yeah. oh. Catch, catching up with the lore, we're rescuing Captain Keys here. Uh, he he got captured and he's on this ship. That's why we're here. We're gonna, gonna we're gonna go get him, uh, and then things are things are gonna go weird for the for Keys and the team. The double shot, I love it. Oh, oh no plasma for the long range stick. That's tragic. Uh, I, Normally, I like doing this strat. Oh. All right. Slightly slower, but very easy to do. So that's cool. We we did it. We rescued Captain Keys. We're gonna take him back to somewhere that doesn't make sense later. Or yeah, come back. So just backtracking. Lots of grenades. Weapons flying everywhere. Yep. Oh, and I should. So I mentioned earlier how. Um, there's a lot of dialogue that slows the game down that you can skip by killing Marines in this game. Um, on this mission, there's a bunch of dialogue that Captain Keys has to say before the level can end. And if you kill Captain Keys, the game reverts you. Because, you know, story-wise, Captain Keys is not supposed to die. However, we are speedrunners. We are <laughs> resourceful. We found if you kill the other Marines and leave Captain Keys alive, Captain Keys gets mad at you and starts trying to kill you. And while he's trying to kill you, he will not do his dialogue lines. So if you kill the Marines around Keys and then start running away from him because he's attacking you and get to the end of the level, uh, it'll just skip the entire dialogue. It's like a 45 second skip. And I, I should point out, this is not even the actual end of the level. This is like a glitched end of the level because of the grenade jump we did earlier. It's supposed to make you all go all the way back to where the grenade jump happened, but the trigger's broken this whole complex cascading way that I can't explain on stream. Yeah. <laughs> but trust me, we just saved a bunch of time, and now we're on Silent Cartographer. That was a great TNR, by the way. Yeah, that was really clean. I'm very happy about that TNR. Oh, yeah. The Covenant believe that what they call the ah, Silent Cartographer. 
su such an iconic level, both in for casual play and for speed running. This is one of the first levels that like people really got into like competing on in speed running back in like the early 2000s. Um, there were a lot of different routes, a lot of different options. Like people knew about a lot of the skips. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that there's somebody in the chat who has never seen the speedrun route for this and say so this this whole level is shaped like a big circular island. There's two installations at it. You're supposed to like go to one of the installations. They lock the door on you. You go to the other installation and disable the security and then go back to the first installation and uh, the door is open and you go through. We're just gonna glitch past the door and then glitch back past. Out. Uh, we're also supposed to, <laughs> supposed to do like a D-Day fight with the Marines to like get a Warthog, but it's faster to just take a nice little beach stroll. And I always found it kind of ironic that like this was the most popular speedrun in the level for a long time, but it starts with like a 40 second cutscene and then a 45 second beach walk. It's like a really dull <laughs> start. And then as soon as the speedrun starts, it's just like trick, 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 done. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I believe that's how a lot of the CE levels have like become like lots of yeah. just very heavy trick oriented levels which is very cool <laughs> yep it's such a super dense game and we so we recently finished a community project a new segment of speedrun and chronos and i with a couple of, with cambit and burnt we tried to do a commentary for the run and we did it and it was good but like there's literally too much to talk about too many tricks happen too fast to explain them all you you'd have to like slow the video down just to talk about everything that's happening it's it's ridiculous yeah, if you really want to see some very, very fast Halo, you can definitely check out the segments that run on YouTube. Oh yeah, it's nutty. All right, so this is the door that they try to lock on, on us, and we're just gonna fling through with the Warthog before they close it. Oh, Ooh, that was... Nope, <laughs> we're not. Okay, we got the good checkpoint though, that's good. Yeah. You don't always get this checkpoint to retry. There we go, second try. And kill this guy to pick up his grenades. Those are gonna be important later. Shoot here to skip the cutscene, and we begin the descent. If he hits this corner just perfectly... Ooh, okay, okay. That will kill you if you don't hit that a little bit. Uh, one red, good. that's fine, we don't care. Activate the map room. And uh, I mentioned in the last level that overshields make you invincible for a couple seconds. Uh, this is... This is stick stack, and it's a thing of beauty. Oh. Look at that. First try. Really well done. That's not an easy stick. Like, getting that that pile of grenades to explode at the same time is so much harder than it looks. Um, if you have one grenade that's slightly off time and it goes off early, it will actually push the rest of the grenades away before they explode and you only get the force of one grenade instead of five or six or whatever that is. Um, so getting that first try is awesome. I've, uh, I'm delighted to watch that trick. I, I've, I've played a lot of this level and that, just watching that trick is so nice. Yeah, I couldn't do the triple nade stack after because the jackal spawned there, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a second grenade stack you can do that's smaller, but uh, it's pretty dependent on enemy position because you, yeah. You need all your health and you don't have an overshield to, to make it invincible. So the level's on a timer now. Um, you can just very slowly and casually kill the camel elites here. There's, there's a lot of controversy. There's a few different opinions between runners about how to handle these invisible elites. Some people will actually run back down and grab the Warthog and drive up here. Some people have like some positionings where they bait the elites into like this little slot here. But it, at the end of the day, it's just a timer. You're just kind of waiting. <laughs> Awesome stuff. Great SC. Yeah, super good. Hard, Hard level. One small fling. But we're nah, good. Whatever. <laughs> the people have already forgotten about it. They're blown away by the stick stack. <laughs> AOTCR, welcome to the donation level. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so there's going to be... Uh, so what's the best way to describe this? There's going to be a trick that happens. It's kind of like a... Well, we used to, I think I used to call it like a reverse domino effect where like if one domino fails to fall, the rest of them fail to fall. It's like that, but for triggers. Uh, we're going to skip one sequence of the level and it's just going to deload everything. It's going to be a completely barren, empty level for the entire thing. Uh, it's light, slightly less boring than it used to be because we have more teleports. Um, but there's not going to be any combat past the first room. There's not going to be any enemies. There's no like music or like trigger like or checkpoints. It's it's just flying through an empty glitched map. Uh, this but, he, but he does still okay. have to get through one room of legendary combat. I guess arguably two. Oh, that grenade missed. Oh no. Should be okay. Fine. We're good. We're good. That elite didn't seem to find that bothersome that you just ran past him. 
This grunt spawned nice. in. Interesting. Oh, one weird. red. Is this gonna? Okay. No, it's fine. I, Everything's fine here. I hope the banshee doesn't kill you. Yeah. So this is a an insane AI manipulation. If he stands in this spot. Uh, and then looks at the banshee that's flying and then crouches at a very specific time. The banshee's gonna follow a very unusual path, crash into the wall. Oh. And if he does it perfectly, the pilot. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> it didn't eject. <laughs> That's fine. This is a tough trick. So the goal here is, so vehicles in this game have like a kind of safety detection thing where if the vehicle is upside down and it crashes into a wall or hits some kind of geometry, it'll eject the pilot. That's for like, if you flip your Warthog, it'll kick you out. But we can use that to glitch the pilot of the Banshee out. And now we have a Banshee. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you watched a Halo speed run in years past, you would have seen uh, him manually like jump down this bridge and like run along the ground, which is faster than actually beating the game, but it's still pretty slow um, compared to this. So we're just going to be flying for a while. We, we've got, we can do some donations, that's for sure. Yep. All right, thank you, Goat Rope. We've got the $117 train still chugging along into Let's the go. station. <laughs> we've got $117 from Cron Bear. Here's 117 for all the fallen UNSC Marines. Chat, can you please press <laughs> F to pay respects? <laughs> We got $117 from VR Master. Did someone say 117 donation train? Because I heard 117 donation train. Happy to help out in honor of my all-time favorite franchise, Halo. That's right, you did indeed hear 117 donation train. We've got $117 from McPadface. Is that a natural cave formation? It, it was. We've got $117 from The Man, 1086. As a former Halo runner, I always try to donate during Halo runs at GDQ, but this year's is extra special. Four years ago, my girlfriend started chemo for colon cancer. She told me I wasn't allowed to propose to her until she had her hair back. After treatment and surgery and post-surgical complications and a pandemic, we finally got married last month. Thanks to everyone involved, from the runners to the organizers to everyone watching and donating for helping out this worthy cause. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, so I'm shooting right here to delay a checkpoint. So normally you would get a checkpoint pretty far back. And the next trick has uh, something called Banshee teleports, where yeah. we teleport from one spot pretty far to another one using the weird geometry that exists in this game. Yeah, I think the sad thing about a lot of these teleports is that if you're just a casual viewer, you, you don't actually, un you can't actually see how far you're actually moving uh it just looks like oh he just like blinked from one hallway to another but it's like this is really far. it's like 100 meters or like more so we're gonna fly the banshee into this hallway which of course bungie intended you to do this is just this is in the books there's a chapter where master chief does this um and i mentioned before that these teleports happen when geometry collides um so it's kind of hard to do that with a vehicle but you know speedrunners are resourceful we found a way so he's going to put himself under the Banshee and then start punching it in certain ways. And as he punches it, it kind of rocks forward and then rocks back. Oh. Whoa! That was fast. That was like an IL <laughs> teleport. Um, yeah, I angled it very slightly wrong, like a yeah. tiny bit too far left. Hey, that's why we have the checkpoint. <laughs> Once again, checkpoint manipulation, very important in this game. Because you can't just quick save like, it, like it's a Half-Life game or anything, you know? You got you to gotta trick the game into giving you a checkpoint at the right time. Um, so yeah, again, he's going to punch the Banshee so it rocks forward, and then as it rocks back onto his head, it's going to kind of intersect with him in a way that, bloop, lets him teleport to the next area and uh, progress. And once again, there's no enemies. There's supposed to be an elite that hops into this Banshee and starts flying around, but again, there's nothing going on. We're going to do another teleport to the end, because, you know, why bother walking when you can teleport? You got time for some more donations then? Yeah, we can drop a couple in here, no problem. Sure. We've got $25 from Dr. Zoma oh God, PhD. I'm a simple man. I see Halo and I donate. Let's see the teleports and the warts all over the giant hula hoop. Good luck to the runner. We've got $25 from Spartan214. That Mr. Spartan John Halo who shoots aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. And $5 from Wacky. Let's go, Kronos. <laughs> We hey, got a watch watching. party going on to the Discord. Everyone's cheering you on. Excited <laughs> to see what library's got in store for you this time. I don't keep oh. it loaded, son. You'll have to find ammo as you go. <laughs> Thanks, Wacky. 
Yeah, Wack is a very prominent Halo Runs community member, very active, uh, running events, building bots, doing all sorts of great stuff for the community. Very happy to hear that the boys are in Discord. This is 343 Guilty Spark. Um, cool level. Got some tricks, got some glitches, got some things that can go wrong. Uh, taking some innovative pathing. I think a little grenade jump oh, here. No. Oh. <laughs> Not quite. Thankfully, there's a backup with the rock. Yeah. Um, Unfortunate. So, there, yeah. If if you've played this game casually, you know that there is a there's a there's a plot twist about to happen. There's uh, something that we used to call the I guess still call it the flood reveal. There's the the room where they reveal that the flood exists. Um, we're gonna be doing reveal skip where we never go there, so we never learn that the flood exists. They just they just kind of start appearing. There's no there's no lore explanation. It's just all of a sudden there's a new enemy type. Um, so at the bottom of this elevator is gonna go into another big room. You're supposed to take a right hand turn and go through that door and learn about the existence of the Flood. Instead, we're going to take a left-hand turn, go find a weird, kind of poorly, like, kind of a glitchily uh, crafted light fixture, grenade jump into it and get clipped into this platform, standing on another platform, jump over to this invisible ledge out of bounds, hop over here, not hitting your head. Oh, perfect. All right, so that's Please. reveal skip, and it saves like three minutes. Uh, and again, skips the, the lore reveal of where the, like, what the flood are. Uh, so we're just going to... Oh, there's this weird goop on the wall and a bunch of dead covenant. I wonder what that's about. Don't know. No, <laughs> no evidence. Also, camo jumo, by the way. Very yep. fun trick. <laughs> Iconic trick. Uh, there is technically a reveal skip skip that tr skips that trick with an even crazier trick, but it is not full game viable. It's not marathon viable in the slightest. It's like... Oh, I, I miss Camo Jumo. Dude, hardest oh, no. trick in the game. Hardest trick in the game. <laughs> yes, it is, it is definitely the hardest trick. <laughs> Look at this. It's so... Huh, second try. Here we go. Yes. Great work. Great work. Got the shotgun. Oh, ooh. Uh, not quite. Tragic. I guess you don't... Eh, I don't know. Shotgun is less important than it used to be. I wanted to grab it, but uh, there's like a timer for picking up weapons sort of thing. Yeah. So we're totally invisible, cruising along. There's going to be a couple grenade jumps. Um, and then and then the end of the level with a weird trigger that we that went misunderstood or not understood at all for like 14 years. Um, and then we finally figured it out. And we figured out how to like the ending of this level felt extremely random. Um, and then it, once we figured it out, it made sense why it appeared so random. This is pretty chill. Oh, oh. I'm jinxing you. As soon as I say it's chill, shotgun boy shows up. Huh? Oh, no, it's fine. We're it's good. Just hanging back. <laughs> I, I, if I jinx your run, I will personally apologize. Uh, yeah. So that's guilty spark. Uh, we're we're out of we're out of this out of facility. We're going to get picked up by foe hammer. But that never happens. We get teleported away by a guilty spark. Um, so, so we should shoot about the, the marines right there, actually, to oh. make one of them follow you. It helps with this end section. That's new to me. I did not know about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, Does he just like draw fire? Yeah. So he's trying oh. to run towards me, and he's absorbing some damage. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, yeah. So the the way this level end works, you end up at this like tower you're trying to get rescued from. And from our perspective, you just sort of had to wait for some amount of time. Sometimes it was 10 seconds, sometimes it was like several minutes, and we had no idea why. We'd like kill as many uh, flood as we could, we'd hide, we'd fight, like do whatever we tried didn't, didn't change anything. Eventually we got access to the scripts controlling this part of the game. We could actually look at the code being used, and we find these sentinels in the sky, they are allies, they are on your side, they're helping you fight, but they control the end trigger. So the, I guess the designer was like, okay, so like the player should fight until all of their allies have died, and they're like against the ropes, and then we'll end the level. Um, but once we figure that out, we just we just kill our allies again, and uh, the level ends. That was ah, a very the library. clean ending, by the way. It was. That was super super tight. Ah, the library. Well, <laughs> do you have any words for the library? I think I think a lot of people have opinions on the library. Very scary level. Yeah. And not just because it's like horror themed, <laughs> because the, the tricks are incredibly hard and incredibly random. I think this is the, like there's a lot of very difficult tricks in this in this speedrun, but like most of them you have a lot of control over. 
Um, the library has a lot of tricks that you have very little control of. You're kind of at the game's mercy. Uh, we're going to introduce the concept of a flood bump. Um, it's very similar to a teleport, but it's much shorter range, and it uses um, the floods, the flood of this mechanic, because they're kind of like a zombie parasite race. Um, when, a, when a flood spawns, it has a small chance of being what we call a reviver, which means they die in fewer shots, this guy will go down in two shots, and then he's going to stand back up, like, ah, oh, was a resurrected zombie. But when they stand up, they can actually bump you, and we get moved, like, a couple feet forward, but that's enough to glitch inside the door that's normally locked for, like, a minute and proceed with the level. Um, there's potentially five of those in this run. Uh, that's a very optimistic count. Um, I think we're, we're gonna go for at least three, maybe four. Um, the, the fifth one is like literally completely RNG and sometimes crashes the game. <laughs> so I'm hoping we don't do carrier bump, but I'm gonna go for it. I'll go for it. I'll okay, go for it do, once. Do you have the, I think yes, there's I have a, a backup with the, <laughs> as well. The, do you have the crash fix running? Like there's a uh, fan. Yeah. Isn't there a fix for that? Yeah, there is. Okay, that's good. So we're hopefully not going to crash. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's as I said, it's totally random whether these flood are revivers or not. There's some manipulations you can do to like... So that first one is guaranteed to be a reviver because the, he spawns with the start of the level and the RNG seed is always the same. But every other flood is totally random. And the best you can do is set up a checkpoint right before the flood spawns and then just keep trying over and over and over with the revert. Um, that's what's going to happen on Dark Door. I believe there was a donation wishing Kronos a first tried Dark Door, which would be great. It's a 40% chance per revert. Um, so the odds are it doesn't go that way. But hey, who knows? Maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe the donation has, has, has blessed us with good luck. Very RNG heavy trick, Dark Door. Yeah. Sometimes you get it first try, and then other times you get it, you know, 12th. Yeah, there's some, there's there's some, some truly like unlucky. <laughs> statistically anomalous videos out there of people failing. Like it's a forty percent chance, and you failed it fourteen times in a row. Like okay, the 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 speed run gods have decided that you do not get a PB today. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is actually pretty optimal for me to go for carrier bump right now. I have extra <laughs> over shield, so oh yeah, yeah. If I fail it, I don't lose any time. Hopefully. <laughs> As long That's as I don't die. <laughs> this door used to be really chill. You could just like wait in a spot and the enemies wouldn't fight you. But here we go with a different type of flood bump. Oh, no. Oh. I missed. All right. <laughs> yeah, the carrier bumps are much more, they're like even more random than regular flood bumps because it doesn't use the same mechanic of the flood standing up to bump you. It actually, when you explode a carrier form, they spawn a bunch of the little tiny popcorn infection guys. Um, and the when those guys spawn, they have a chance of uh, bumping you. But their position is literally completely random. Uh, there's zero way to control it at all. You just sort of, you just try and you see what How happens. How do I still have overshield? <laughs> Wait, yeah. What? <laughs> is this on legendary? <laughs> the, those are my favorite YouTube comments. When people like don't understand how good people are at speedrunning this game, they're like, hey, look, I played this game on legendary and the enemies killed me way faster than you. Like, no, you're... You're watching a video of an elite gamer. Legendary <laughs> is nothing to them. Yeah, I really like this route. It's because it's not like secret or blocked off or anything. It's just yeah, you just walk through the center and you don't have to yeah. deal with all the rocket flood and the yeah. <laughs> other way, <laughs> which it's is ridiculous. very yeah, very interesting. And I think there's isn't there a soft lock here? Is that only if you get carrier bump? Yeah, if you get carrier bump, you can soft lock if you go at a very specific time frame. It's like within a one or two second interval. Yeah. This door jams halfway and they try to make you wait, but hey, just a grenade jump. Uh, all right, so chat, I'm gonna need you to cross your fingers for this segment here. Uh, this is- Scary hallway. <laughs> there's some very challenging combat, you know? We, we, we try, as hard as we can as speedrunners to skip the, the difficult combat, but sometimes it's not an option. Sometimes you just have to get through it. And it's a speedrun, so we're not gonna like, we're not gonna take this timidly. Uh, Kronos is just gonna be barreling past a bunch of enemies and they have rockets and, fl and shotguns and all sorts of horrible things. So good luck, Kronos. I believe yeah. in you. <laughs> so kill these three guys, hopefully don't take too much damage here. Okay. Yeah. Hope these guys aren't bad. Okay, they're good. We're chilling. Here comes Rocket Go Boy. Frag. 
I should be good. I don't want to jinx okay, myself. Okay, okay, okay. We're chilling. Yeah, look at that. Your shield hey, return. Oh, oh my god. Let's, wow, that's awesome. That's great. Oh, 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 oh okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. Just some extra insurance there. <laughs> yeah, well done. That's, god, that's not an easy segment. That's one of those, like, so many people have childhood memories of taking, like, four hours to beat this level on co-op with their sibling. And, like, those segments are why. Like, there's just so many enemies in such a tight area spawning from all sides, in front of you, behind you, uh, like, above you somehow. Uh, and we just hold W, and it works. <laughs> oh, that's okay. great. That's a load off. Now it's uh, <laughs> soon dark door time. Yep. Hopefully, first try. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm believing. So there's a couple enemies in this next section that I have to kill. Uh, especially in this tunnel. Hopefully they all die to this frag grenade. Yeah. And there's a checkpoint, mi uh, checkpoint minute coming up soon, because as I mentioned, it's very important to be able to retry spawning the flood to see if you get a reviver. Um, and if you don't get the checkpoint minute, it's very, very time consuming. Ooh. So you kind of, like, I believe the game's already trying to give you a checkpoint and you kind of need to stay in danger so that you don't get it. Um, that's part of why we're running so fast here. Yep. As we round the corner, we'll hopefully get a checkpoint and then it's Dark Door RNG time. Okay, here we go. Good. So he's going to shoot the elite. If it dies in two shots, uh, if it falls down after two shots, then it's a, then it's a reviver. So we're just going to keep retrying until we get one. Oh, oh that was walked. a reviver, but he walked. Yeah, there's a very small chance that the AI will just decide to start moving immediately. And, oh, it's uh, also because of my grenade choice right here. That's why. Uh, Not used to oh, doing it with a plasma. They're walking a lot. All right. Well, okay. RNG I'd like, does its thing. I'd like to apologize to the person that donated, wishing us for a Stark Door. Best we can do is like sixth, but that's how Halo goes sometimes. Yep. Rocket flood on the left. What's he got? Oh, he didn't spawn there. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, time for like a skip that somehow went missed for like 20 years. Yeah. It's uh, very interesting. So yeah. normally a bunch of enemies spawn at this section, but if you walk at the very corner right there, you just skip this entire like yeah. a wave of enemies that spawns in here, which was yep. very scary. Very problematic. Like we were jumping over that thing for 20 years and someday, one day someone just walked two feet to the right and found, oh, the trigger doesn't happen if you walk two feet to the right. More combat. These halls are thankfully a bit less hectic, but still somewhat hectic compared to the, uh, the previous ones. Yeah. Uh, we're coming no, up on 90 we're... second door. <laughs> and I, I'm sad about this trick because this used to be the segment where you could go like grab a drink from the kitchen. You could go to the bathroom. Like you could just, this door locks for 90 seconds and there's a spot you can hide. But it's a speed run and everything becomes faster. Um, so we're going to trigger this door, walk back. And as it closes, if he hops inside, it glitches him into the door. He's now inside the geometry, posi positions himself very carefully. Does some very precise inputs, and he should teleport. Oh, oh no! I moved <laughs> my should. mouse a tiny bit right there. Mm, oh, why. you're talking about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's um, very, very precise. A lot of yeah. these teleports, so you have to be very careful. Yeah, and the the like pixel lineups that he's looking that he's doing, he, like lines everything up, moves a certain way. These have been developed over the course of go. like years by very dedicated community uh, members, I guess we'll say. And uh, yeah, they, they, they find these reliable setups that let us do these crazy teleports. So he's teleported into the ceiling. He's jumped into a light fixture. He's now teleporting like 50 meters to the right, past the locked door and past the enemy spawns, thankfully. And now that's the end of the third story, third floor. Yep. Moving on to the fourth and final library floor. Gotta say, I've seen libraries go a lot worse than this. Yeah, it is a very scary level overall. Yeah, and there's there's the opportunity for one more flood bump. It's like pretty risky. I'm not gonna blame you if you don't try it in a marathon scenario. Yeah. 
Um, Only go for it if it's the very first guy that happens to be a human guy. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, this one, like, there's no way to, like, set up a flood really well. There's no way to control, like, anything about it. You just sort of hope that the first guy through works. And there's a lot of randomness, like, they're, they're flood with guns. And for some reason, flood with guns sometimes just don't shoot. They just run at you. And that's what you're banking on happening for this setup. Uh, it, it's it's generous to call it a setup. Um, but the, the, <laughs> we're going to try. Sometimes they just decide to shoot you. And that's obviously a problem. So this is the final locked door. Oh, we got a flood. He's got a shotgun. We, we hope he doesn't shoot the shotgun. We hope he just walks over for no reason, which he's done. Get the setup to no. shot. Oh man, yeah, he fired. This he guy fired was, but oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was he? I'm pretty sure he was. He dropped the frag. I think I dealt too much damage to him. Oh Something. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. If you use the wrong gun to knock a reviver down, they will just straight up die. Oh well, it's pretty small and like, <laughs> once again, completely out of your control. You did the setup perfectly, and he just wasn't a reviver. Yeah. Now we just wait for this door. Here we go. Yep. But we're technically not done with the tricks, because there's still yet another grenade jump coming up. It's a small one, but it's like it's got a much tighter timing window than the previous ones. If you get it wrong, things go very south for you. Okay. Everything should be good here. Just try not to die to any of these guys. Yeah. He's got to keep his shields and health high because he's about to do a grenade jump. On the moving door, catch the window. Yeah, nice. So the enemies are now jumping through. And uh, you can't see it, but like 20 flood are about to spawn behind it, which is supposed to be like the epic final wave, the final battle of the whole level. But we're, we just got past it, so no problem. And now I've got a 63 second cutscene, so we can drop some donos in here. I've got you covered. The $117 train has not stopped, y'all. Uh, we've it. got $117 from B Deedle. 117 hype train, you say? Yes, we did. We got $117 from Socratic Bear. Let's give one final effort to hit that $3 million. GDQ is an amazing pillar of the gaming community, and together we can finish the fight against cancer. And we've got $117 from The Dose, who says... We need a weapon to fight cancer. Been an awesome week of great runs. Always love watching GDQ throughout the year. Awesome that Halo Combat Evolved made it in this year, and hopefully one day we can finish the fight against cancer. And we've got a 3456 donation from Adversary. Good luck, Kronos. I've been so lucky to be a part of the Halo Runs community for over seven years now, and Kronos has been such an integral part of keeping the community active with events like the Halo Runs Grand Prix. And a big shout out to Goat Rope for helping to create the Halo Runs website in the first place and being involved all these years. Kronos, don't forget, you need to stop for Echo 419. <laughs> well, I don't know What's if that? that's true. What's that Halo Runs website again, by the way? I'm so glad you asked. I don't think it's mentioned yet. Uh, Haloruns.com. If you go to your web browser and type that mm -hmm. in, press enter, you're going to find all sorts of speed run leaderboards, videos, streams, an awesome community with cool people hanging out in it all the time. Oh, it's a great time. I got to recommend Halo, it. Haloruns.com. I can just type that in right now and go there. Yeah, any browser, any computer, even on your telephone, you can do it. It's crazy. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Fully compatible. iOS, Android, Windows. We got it all. <laughs> um, yeah. This is two betrayals. This level, uh, I have a complex relationship with this level. This level used to be like the most combat intensive level in the whole game. And then people found a trick to skip all the combat, but the trick is still really hard. So it's not like the level's like free and easy. Any no, like it's, it's still just really hard. Um, if you've not seen the modern strategy for two betrayals, you're about to have your head exploded. So maybe put a tarp down. Um, like- Oh, I don't think this <laughs> grenade setup will work. <laughs> oh, oh. My frag went way over, I think, yeah. That's too bad. Uh, no, the Banshee's been pushed away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, if you watch the segmented speedrun, um, you will find uh, footage of this Banshee coming, flinging towards the player, thanks to a fancy set of grenades. But unfortunately, didn't happen for us today. Yeah, I overthrew it. 
by a small amount. Okay. So we deloaded all of the enemies by pressing this door twice, and now we have to press it again to load back in all of these enemies to continue the level. So we can continue to progress, and we're coming up to a very difficult trick. Yeah. Very complicated to explain, so... This is one of those tricks that was, like, known about for a really long time, but was never actually made viable. This is called Banshee Out of Level. Uh, you've seen us get the player, get the Master Chief out of bounds a few times this round. We're about to get an entire Banshee out of bounds, which is really complicated. Basically, this the game loads the world in, like, chunks, and so if we... Like, right now, the canyon area that we just saw outside is not loaded. It doesn't exist. Um, once we go back out there, this room is going to stop existing. <laughs> Lots of RNG with the Sentinel here. view. Yeah. One yeah. red here doesn't help. Yeah, sometimes you walk through there and they literally don't hit you. Sometimes they just nuke you. Just randomness. Yeah, I'm um, just going to wait a lot for my shields here. Yep, yeah, that's safe. Um, but yeah, so he... <sighs> So we're gonna use two Banshees. We're gonna park them on the edge of a loading zone. And then he's gonna get out of bounds and then traverse back to the edge of the loading zone without hitting the loading trigger. And then use that to fly out of bounds. So he parked the Banshee outside in a very specific spot. Now he's gonna fling himself through the oh. ceiling. It's gonna take a couple tries because this is, there was a very big controversy about this trick about whether we should like let people use certain software to control their mouse here. All right, so he's flung himself out of bounds. He's now outside of the loading zone trigger. So he loads the room back there. He's deloaded the canyon outside. Um, you're gonna be able to see it, but the canyon out here is not real. Oh no. Good thing I have a checkpoint. Very good thing you have a checkpoint. This this platform is like really complicated. Like, God, Halo 1 out of bounds platforming is super glitchy. Okay, so. Uh, he's in a Banshee. None of the geometry you see here is real. The only thing that's real right now is the room that he, he just left. So, um, I actually lied to you. There's another real thing, the triggers. So this level has like, uh, like 25, 43, like some insane number of triggers that you have to hit in sequence. That's why we've never been able to like break it speedrun wise. But if you fly a banshee through the triggers while the geometry is not loaded it's it all still works all of the every time he hits an invisible trigger here the game's like all right the script is progressing spawn a bunch of enemies but the enemies don't spawn because this space doesn't exist in the game like there's nowhere to put them so he's as far as the game thinks he's progressing just beating the game in sequence at like this is not a sequence break according to the scripts according to the software um but he's just hitting everything in ethereal space in a banshee and he's going to be doing this for a while um, yeah so hopefully i did it correctly here so there's a couple visual and audio cues that you use so there's one here there's the ooh, explosion which is that's good. good otherwise it's it means i missed one of like 15 yep. triggers back then yeah which and is you always can't know, not fun <laughs> they're totally invisible there's no feedback other than that explosion and it's it's pretty sad because you have to re go back and redo the entire thing if it goes wrong. Yeah, so I'm now also getting in and out of the Banshee here to continue to load in these next sections of the game. Yep. I believe it's called BSP loads. Yep, and, and he has to stay out of bounds as he does that or the whole trick goes away. I, th I believe that there are some backup saves in a folder, but I'm, yep. I'm, believing, I'm also believing that we're not going to need them. Yeah, hopefully we don't need a backup save here, because <laughs> yeah. if I fail something, that is probably about five minutes gone, so... Yeah. It's a real run killer. all the level. backup saves. More triggers to hit. And now we're going to go do second generator. Yes, catching up with the lore. There's three pulse generators here that help the Halo kill everything in the universe. We're trying to disable those so that it doesn't happen. Pretty straightforward sci-fi story, um, but uh, we're coming up on the second generator here, and he's—he it kind of looks like he's following the the like geometry of the level, even though it's not real. Once again, he's hitting triggers. Um, the only reason we're able to do this is because uh, some very cool people in the past have built some third-party software that lets us view the game triggers. We can actually see where the volumes are, where we have oh, to I stand to do certain things. Oh no! Oh no! All right, so we're we're, we're redoing some triggers. Okay, we'll pretend that we hit that trigger. Then. Oh, are we doing a backup save? Yeah, I'll do a backup right. save. 
I think yeah. that's a reasonable choice. Yeah, the trigger that I missed was all the way at the bottom of the elevator, which is about a minute oh, of flying yeah. back, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, technically, I could hit it here. But then it would be more flying back and forth. Yeah, live your life, Kronos. Yeah. Another PSP load? These are not easy. Like, I... I learned this this strat a couple of year like a year ago, and man, is it hard. The, just like getting the banshee just close enough to the game world without clipping back in bounds, because as soon as you're even slightly in bounds, even a tiny bit, it just yanks your banshee in there, and you can't get it back out. Yeah, so I'm going to basically fly to where my checkpoint that I saved is, and I'm going to inject it in. So let's see. So normally you would come here, there's like a marker, you would get some dialogue here by flying here, and then you will fly straight here, and let me load in my checkpoint save once I see this stuff again. Huge shout outs to uh, Burnt for his wonderful checkpoint manager software. That's his, right? Yep. I'm shouting out the right person, wonderful. Great guy. Okay, there we go. Look at that. We're so I did, I did it. <laughs> okay. So now we do this trick. Broken door yep. skip. So we skip past this door that normally like breaks. And, and it tries you, to prevent yeah. you from taking the vehicle through. And we're back in bounds. And there's enemies. The level's back on track. Um, man, it, it truly is a delight. Like having done so many two betrayal speed runs where we had to fight all of the enemies in all of the rooms for the entire level. It's really nice to see this level broken so extremely. There's a couple triggers left. He's got a, there's the famous five float trigger. Uh, this is the reason we have to do all these triggers. Like this is the one trigger that's unskippable in the whole level. Yeah, uh, the, we, we need have to, to kill, kill a certain number of enemies here. Yeah, I believe there's two groups of five flood, but you only need to kill five of them Yep. in one of or the other. Yeah, yeah, this whole area. And he does, it, it would be nice to just fly to the end here because we have a Banshee. You're supposed to be on foot here. Um, but there, once again, there are triggers to hit. So there's a trigger here. He has to go down to the ground to hit. It's going to fly up a bit to avoid the rocket launcher flood here. Hit one final trigger and then turn back to the end of the level. And that'll be that. We'll be on to keys. Yeah. I love keys. With the, <laughs> the very fun keys flood bump. Yeah. Very iconic trick. The first flood bump ever done in a speedrun. It's funny, like library is very associated with the flood bump now because there's five of them, but keys is the, the OG flood bump level. Okay, uh, so I'm going to be using an audio cue here during the cutscene to yeah. guarantee that I get a reviver flood. So Final once the cutscene starts, I'll listen. It's also a visual cue that I use as well. The Covenant network is absolute chaos. I think that should be good. Looks good. This is an RNG manipulation. Um, the the RNG seed for this for every level in this game is set to the same value at the start of each level. Um, so if you do the same inputs, like just walking forward there, um, you're gonna get the same outcome. So hopefully that manipulated this flood into being a reviver. I'm believing in Cronus's ability to do the manipulation. Pop nice. this guy. Yeah, got the knock. Boom, right through. That's awesome. All right, so that just skipped like, I don't know, eight minutes of regular gameplay. Uh, <laughs> this level, we kind of skipped it. This level's kind of horseshoe shaped. Like, you technically start right next to the ending. Um, there's actually a little grate you can see through. Um, you can see, like, the spoiler of Captain Keys being flood infected. Um, they just wanted to do that for dramatic effect, I guess. But hey, we're speedrunners. We're going to take advantage of that. We're not going to do the whole circuitous route that they expect you to. <laughs> Unskippable cutscene. It's funny. This is uh, this this is the fastest level in Halo One, but it's also the level with the longest unskippable cutscene in level. Uh, if this cutscene didn't exist, this would be like a I don't know minute forty level. Yep. Also, it's important to note that I killed all of the enemies because when you enter this cutscene, all of them reanimate, so they yep. can easily kill you, especially on legendary, and you have no control over that if you are still in the cutscene. And yep. if you die, that's very bad news. 
You'd think they'd make you invincible during the cutscene, but they don't. They just teleport your body, like, under a platform, but the Flood can still find you, and they can still kill you. And I have seen it happen. Oh, Nice. Yeah, now we just walk into the end. There's a lot of enemies to run past, but, you know, most of the time you get through no problem. Hit the trigger, drop down. Ah! Can oh. I drop, please? <laughs> nice. There you go. Yeah, I have We're to good. be very careful there because if I uh, drop down a bit too far, I like all the way to the ground, I would probably die of fall damage as well. Yep. And that's keys. What a quick level. This is actually very a gold solid. split. <laughs> <laughs> very clean. Nice. That's nine levels down, one to go. The famous Ma. Um, once again, more out of bouncing. Um, how extended of a bump are you going for? Do you do you do the uh, the like early out of bounds? Uh, yep, we are doing nice. everything. <laughs> okay, glad yep. to hear it. All right. Uh, yeah, this level, this is one of the first levels that had like a truly, truly out of bounds glitch in it way back in the day. Um, it was, I don't know, very tough to do. And it was like a pretty small version of it. As time has gone on, it's just been extended ex and extended and extended. People stay out of bounds for longer. They get out of bounds earlier. Um, there's a door that's about to get bashed open by the flood, this one here. If he stands in the corner as they bash it open, bloop, he just gets put out, out of bounds and he doesn't have to deal, deal with this insane number of enemies. Uh, he does still have to hit the loading zone here. Yeah, if he crouches there, it's going to load the next area. He's going to keep platforming around. And we're going to see, once again, yet another teleport. Um, this is, uh, I don't know. I, we'll call it one of the harder teleports. I think it's pretty hard. Uh, it's very precise positioning, and it requires a very precise input. Oh my, wow, first try, nice <laughs> job, dude. It's, it's like you have to jump and press W one frame apart from each other, which is really hard to do. Um, and he got it first try. And this is one of the first teleports where we found that you have to have like a specific uh, mouse sensitivity for it to work, because there were some runners who were just like, I literally can't do this. I, I, my, my game looks exactly the same. Um, and we found, oh, it's, yeah, your sensitivity it's like is ruining it. There's like five different ones that work or something, and yeah. all the rest don't. <laughs> Which yeah. is very 2 interesting. 3.1, yeah. Oh, you're just going through the middle, huh? That's how, <laughs> that's how things go. That's sick. Wow. A new yeah, era yes. of Halo. <laughs> uh, Before, we would ridiculous. always go through the sideways, but not yeah. anymore. Nope. Things way more optimized now. And we've got so much OS, and we've got a rocket launcher for a reason. Yep. We're doing a rocket jump here. I have full, like a lot of overshield, which makes this yeah. doable, which is really nice. Not always an option. Engine room located. Boom. Ooh, one, of, red. one red. That was scary. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Who needs health? Yeah, so there's four of these uh, engine cores we have to open. You're supposed to do them one at a time, but you can just do them two at a time. Um, there is an IL strat where you can shoot them from the outside, but it's so, so, so pixel perfect that like nobody does it because it, it just ruins everything if you get it wrong. Uh, this this room he's in has like, I guess oh, you'd call it like... I sorry, messed it up. I pressed the oh, no. thing at the same time the Cortana dialogue happened, which is oh, not good. Oh, does that break it? Yeah. Interesting. So well, it's gonna be this, makes, interesting. this makes what I was about to say very relevant. Uh, this room has what I would describe as an accelerating spawn rate, where the longer you're in this room, the more enemies there are. And it just goes up and up and up over time. So if things start to go yeah. hairy, there you go. Um, yeah, that's what happens yeah. when... Uh, yeah. It's another one of these like Halo speedrun things where if you can get through as fast as possible, it's fine. If you're a little bit slow, it just becomes a nightmare. So. I was actually a bit too fast. <laughs> oh, right, because of the button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then it, yeah. So, round two, this one's going to go better. Yeah. It's a hard it was like, for sure. Uh, I pressed it at the same frame. Now we're good. That's good. Uh, it's pretty amazing the like level of understanding the community has achieved. Oh, the, that, that guy was very mean. <laughs> he was. He really wanted you. This is, this is, so as cool as this rocket jump is, we do have to acknowledge that it leaves you very low health, which leaves you vulnerable to enemies like that. 
Um, so, you know, it's all about the, the give and take. The risk and the reward. That's speedrunning right there. Okay. We're good this time. I have a lot of extra health now. Yep. Yeah, I so thought you, you delayed the rocket a bit for a slightly smaller rocket jump, but uh, more health, which is good. Because it's hard to actually know. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh, oh my gosh, go. this guy is not cooperating. It's all good. Okay. We'll get there. Of course, these flaps are on a timer. Now. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Four out of four. <laughs> kind of unfortunate there, Sirens but playing. it's fine. Hey, these things happen. It's Halo. I always find this fight super, super hard. Good luck, Kronos. <laughs> All right, that was pretty straightforward. Oh, fuel rod guys still doing their thing. Okay. Nicely done. All right, got a nice big elevator ride. Um, and then we've got the Maw Run, which is, it's just the Maw Run. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we could probably Wait, I think I'm actually gonna tie 117 or get very close to 117. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> perfect time. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we could we could definitely do a couple donations here. Sure. Speaking of 117, we've still got the train going. We got $117 from John Halo, who says, "Gotta catch the train." And we have $15 from DM Penguin. Go go Kronos! You're nailing this run. Thank you for all the work you put into the Halo Runs community. Also, shout out to the lovely painting on your wall. <laughs> We've got $10 from Mr. Penguin Von Penguin. Watching this marathon as I sit in a chair getting tattooed. Towards the end of 2020, my stepmom was diagnosed with end-stage liver cancer, and we lost her two months later. Take this money and help others detect cancer early so they are not lost like that, and maybe one day we can take out cancer like Master Chief takes out his enemies. We've got $25 from AOKB. You know, I've always accidentally killed my Marine allies. I never realized I was doing the right thing. Here's $25 <laughs> for clearing my conscience. There you go. So, we have so what's a, the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you go for it. Uh, Kronos, what's the call? Are we, are we saying hi to Echo 419 or no? Uh, I don't think so. I think, okay. I think if I play normally, I'm going to get a 117 flat. I want to get that. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It might be very close. We will see. Yep. There is, um, we, we mentioned the segmented speed run. The segmented run does a trick before this that actually breaks the triggers in such a way that Echo 419 never shows up here. So in a way, we kind of saved her life. Echo 419 doesn't die in the segmented run. <laughs> but sadly, she's going to die in this one. Yeah, since we're coming up to the end of the run, I would like to give some shout outs, big shout outs to everyone in the Halo Runs community. Yeah. Definitely. Huge factor. Shout outs to the Elder Scrolls community. I know I shouted out the Halo Runs community when I did my Skyrim run a few years ago. So, definitely really happy about that. Yeah, the, the community is honestly, like, as, as somebody who's been speedrunning this game since 2004, there has never been a more vibrant, exciting, amazing time to be part of the speedrunning community in general and Halo specifically. It's it's unbelievable, the, the like level of community, the support, the like tools that are getting built, the, yeah, like so often I'll see like a new speedrunner show up and be like, hey, I'm like trying to get into this game. And like you go live on Twitch and a bunch of veteran runners hop in their chat and they're like giving them advice and like showing them how to get things set up. Like it's just, re it's just really nice to see, you know? I've been watching this for a long time, and it's just, it just brings me happiness. Because I know speedrunning brings brought me a lot of happiness. Um, it's it's just great. Yeah, also, big shout outs to all of the other Halo runners. You know who you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wait, 360. Oh, 360. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. It's not a it's not a valid record if you don't do a 360. That's a Halo runs rule. Not actually, but it should be. Uh, that 360 is actually technically 
a strat. It helps level the vehicle out. If you just drive straight off, sometimes it flips and dies. Time for barrel skip, the last trick in the run. Can we get some god barrels? Nope, regular barrels. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, they want you to walk through this uh, final section, but we're not doing that. We're driving through. And that's time, right? <laughs> awesome. Great job, Kronos. <laughs> yeah. Definitely solid run. Pretty happy about it. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Shout outs to GDQ for hosting this great event. Very happy to be a part of it. Shout outs to all of the other GDQ runners. And I really enjoyed being here. Yeah. Yeah. And especially having you for a commentary go through. Hey, I, I'm excited to watch it. <laughs> I'll let you know, my GDQ run of this game was a 151. So I think your 117 is a bit of an improvement. <laughs> Super amazing to see. So well done. All right, thank you very, very much for that incredible Halo run. I don't think I've seen a run like that ever. Uh, give them a round of applause in the chat there, everybody. I've got some more donations for you. We've still got the $117 train. John might have finished the fight, but we haven't finished these donations. We've got $117 from Fallen Star, who says joining the 117 train and continuing the fight. Well, thank you so much. We've got $10 from Anonymous. We have over 100,000 people watching the stream. If every person watching donated $10, we could donate, we could hit $3 million. Let's get a $10 train going. I like two trains at once. I'm into that. Let's do it. You guys keep it donating. You keep it hype in the chat. Don't go away because after these messages, we'll be right back. Hello everyone, welcome back to AGDQ 2022 online powered by Twitch. We've got some great runs coming up with the legendary Hoda Ruby doing Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. You're not gonna wanna miss it. But first, 
a quick word from one of our friends at Dangan Entertainment. Did you know that Dangan Entertainment is a publishing company striving to share amazing indie games with the world? We help indie developers publish their games on PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, and more. A growing catalog of over 25 games spanning a wide variety of genres. Head on over to dangenentertainment.com. That's D-A-N-G-E-N entertainment.com. All right, we've got a lot of awesome stuff coming up. You know, just right after these two amazing Link to the Past runs, we've got something that I'm sure a lot of you are waiting for, Tetris the Grand Master. You've seen it on here before. You've never seen it like this. And what you've never really seen is Tetris the Grand Master 20G mode. That's max speed. It's, it's ludicrous. It's wild. It's like nothing you've ever experienced and we are at 20,000, uh, sorry, we are at uh, $8,837 out of 75,000. We've got a ways to go, but you've got until the beginning of Tetris the Grandmaster to meet it. And chat, I know you can do it. I've seen you work miracles this week. So we've just got to get those donations in for Tetris the Grandmaster 20G mode max speed. Can you do it? I know that you can. In the meantime, we've got an interview, and I, you're not going to want to miss this either, because again, we're in the presence of speedrun royalty. We've got an interview with Fiesel talking to Hoda Ruby. Hey, everybody. I'm Fiesel, and I'm here with TPCR, who's going to be running Marathon Duran. Hello everyone, I'm Fiesel and I am joined by Hoda Ruby, the runner for Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, All Bosses No Exploration Glitch Run, and I'm joined by translator Keishira. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining me today. Thank you. Um, so what are the most important glitches in this run that we should be looking for? なかでも、一番強いバグ技で、その中でもフックシュと呼ばれる技が最も多用されるものです。え、それらのバグは3年前にユーザーという日本のプレイヤーが発見したことによって始まりました。So, Hotaru B says that the most important glitch uh is called mislotting, and it's a group of glitches that are really overpowered in this game. In this group of glitches, uh, they use a, a glitch called uh, the hook push the most, and these bugs were discovered by a runner called Yuzuhara three years ago, and they've been using them ever since. And can you tell me a little bit about how these glitches work? <laughs> リンクをその方向に移動させるものなんですが、フックブッシュはフックの遠隔操作と移動方向と距離を変更することが可能になります。So ordinarily, uh, you use the hookshot uh, item to move Link in long distances uh, in a straight line, but with the hook push, you can uh, use it to activate the hookshot from uh, a long distance away, or to be able to uh, change the direction and distance that you're traveling with the hookshot. Cool. So, so have there been any new glitches and strategies developed recently that have changed the run at all? Wow. 
Okay, so uh, Hotaribi says that the current route utilizes a route that was made last summer, and the world record was improved with that route by five minutes. And if you also compare the new strategies used uh, with the all dungeons run from last AGDQ, um, uh, that category was made about 10 minutes faster. Oh, wow. Um, so what do you think is the most challenging part of this run? Um, so, uh, he said that uh, after they get the ability to dash with the Pegasus boots, gathering items becomes the most complicated part of the run, and if you make a mistake, uh, the game softlocks and it becomes impossible to progress. Um, so what made you want to run this category? Glitch category is a lot of people who have not been able to do it. これもそのうちの一つです。えー、自分自身で新しい戦術を考えることが楽しみで始めました。Uh, so Hotaribi said that、uh, so a lot of glitched categories of、uh, A Link to the Past are still inefficient in some parts of、uh, the run, and this category is one of those. And、uh, Hotaribi really enjoys finding new routes and、uh, thinking of new,、uh, like discovering new glitches and stuff. So that was one of the reasons that he wanted to do、uh, this category and started running it. Okay.、Uh, do you have any further plans for this category after the marathon? Are there、uh, any improvements that you want to make? Uh, so, Hotaribi says that he doesn't have any、uh, new plans at the moment, but he does plan to、uh, run this category until he's satisfied with his own、uh, execution and runtime. Okay, well, that makes a lot of sense.、Mm -hmm. uh, well, I want to thank you both very much for talking with me today, and Hotaribi, good luck with your run. And、uh, thank you to our translator, Keishira. Everyone, stay tuned and check out this run of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Thank you so much, Fiesel, for that really, really interesting interview. I'm looking forward to that run so, so much. It's coming up next, y'all. Don't go away. You know, one thing that is coming up next, and I know you're here for it, is prizes. You guys want to win prizes? I want to win prizes. Well, I have got you the ultimate prize just for watching right now. That's right, you win. You win a prize segment with Scent and Mr. Game and Shout. Million dollars for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. It's amazing. But AGDQ isn't over yet, Shout. We've still got a whole day of amazing speedruns left and amazing incentives that you all can get your donations in towards. Incentives like the、uh, Tetris the Grand Master 20G mode. If you've ever played Tetris, you know that Tetris has gravity, right? The pieces、sure. start falling faster and faster and yeah, faster, yeah. harder to control. 20G mode. It's basically like max gravity. Pieces are just going to fall like that. And that sounds gonna, problematic. Yeah, they're, they're going to somehow reach Grand Master rank. Playing with the game starting at that speed. But wouldn't the pieces like break when they hit the floor? No, no, Shout. The pieces are, are very sturdy. Okay. Sturdy just like some of the prizes we have. Now, all the prizes we're going to be talking about right now are available until the end of that Tetris the Grandmaster race. So you've got a little bit of time to get those donations in, but definitely get those donations in because there are so many cool prizes here to talk about. First up from Studio Pin Pin, we have this lovely print of some Tetris Tetrads here in all of a, a lovely rainbow of colors. You got all the pieces you need to form your very own Tetris at home. Super cool. Thank you so much, Studio Pin Pin, for sending it out. Absolutely. For a $10 minimum donation from Pearl Pop, we have this Super Mario Bros. 2 Perler scene. Now, a lot of the pieces we've shown from Pearl Pop so far have had a very, have had a very、uh, matte melt to them. This one, you still have a lot of definition on the individual Perlers, and you can, yeah, you can see through this. Like, it's absolutely gorgeous. So amazingly well done. Pearl Pop stuff has just been blowing us away all week. 
$10 minimum donation until the end of the TGM race. Get you in to win that. It is so cool. From uh, Blanco Crafts, we have this absolutely adorable, shiny Mew Bean plush, just like the Mew Bean plush we had a little bit early in the marathon, but this one is shiny. I just instinctively it's want to... It's such a friend. It's, it's such a friend. It's, it's such a baby, right? Like, it is it is such a baby. Oh, I yeah. love it. Uh, it is absolutely adorable. It comes with this uh, little nurse cap that Blanco Crafts has sewn onto it that's exclusive to AGDQ 2020. Sweet. Not something you could get elsewhere. 2022 even <laughs> was not exclusive to two years ago. I'm it's glad it's not just right me now. that got the year wrong. Can I say that? No, like it's it, we're all in time loops. Look, look, it's it's yeah, canon. Time, time travel has been a theme of the marathon. <laughs> you know what else has been a theme of the marathon? Shout excellent prizes. Thank you so much to Blanco Crafts for that adorable Mew plush. Indeed. And speaking of excellent, from Joe, this just got in yesterday and it's blowing me away. So we got a two piece prize pack. We have this Link's Awakening cartridge holder. Now, this is sized for a Game Boy cartridge. This is laser engraved and uh, three-dimensional as well. So, we've got a scene from the game there. And then to go along with that, yep. we have a map. This is, again, it's, it's kind of like that uh, mural that we were showing earlier. It is laser engraved. All of this color is laser engraving. It's absolutely from incredible. The detail is fantastic. Laser engraved uh, Koalant Village map comes uh, to us from Joe. Thank you so much because this is so cool. Such an amazing set from Mr. Ed Nigma. Shout. Mm -hmm. $15 minimum donation. We have this absolutely adorable Link Amigurumi. It even comes with a little Amigurumi shield that's uh, detachable. It has its own shield strap so it's Link so can cool. hold it. Like, come on. It. that's That's such a beautiful level of detail. It's so cool. Thank you so much to Mr. Ed Nigma and the entire Ed Nigma community on TikTok for sending us so many of the amazing Amigurumis that oh, we've yeah. seen as prizes uh, this whole week. Super cool. $15 minimum donation until the end of TGM. Make sure to get those in. In fact, I think 20 actually. I had that wrong. That's I was, on me. I, I, I didn't want to correct you. Look, look I'm. You, <laughs> go ahead, Shout. Okay. Go ahead. The, no, I'll this. let you do this one. That one's oh, really cool. I'm going to give you the, that. Okay? I, I haven't gotten to do a Pearl Pop one in time. You might be able to see it while I'm holding it face down. Oh, my God. This is the stained glass p picture from the front of the Castle of Super Mario 64 so as gorgeous. a pearler. And again, just like that uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 scene, you can see me behind it if you kind of hold it up to the light. This melt is so light and it is still so sturdy that I am yeah. not worried about holding it this loosely. It and is that's such a hard balance to get on purpose, oh, yeah. too. It, it, the, the quality here is incredible. The, the colors are incredible. The melt itself is incredible. This is absolutely so cool. Thank you so much to Pearl Pop for sending that out to us. $20 minimum donation until the end of TGM. Make sure to get those donations in. We might have to stand up uh, here we for the might. next one. Yeah. This next one's a $25 minimum donation. Donation. It's in from Serenity Black. It's massive. It's Pikachu. Which way is up? Here That's, we go. That way is up, but it's not just Pikachu because it's surfing it's Pikachu. It's surfing Pikachu. Oh, look at there we go. We got this. <laughs> look at this friend right here. This is so cool. This is so gorgeous. Absolutely one of a kind. Full size, Full size. hand knitted blanket. Like, what more could you want? It is absolutely it's amazing. amazing. $25 minimum donation gets you yep. entered to win that. Thank you so much to Serenity for sending that out to us. Uh, and from Meredith Frederick, we have a really interesting conversational piece, I think, shout. This Absolutely. is a wooden Tetris trivet. Now, what it is, is it's, you know, tetrominoes yeah. made of different uh, cuts of wood. Okay. So you've got, like, you know, oak and redwood and uh, okay. uh, other different types of lumbers making up each of the different kinds of tetrominoes. Gotcha. And, you know, you're forming a, there we go, this side, forming a Tetris with the eyepiece there. So it's just a really cool kind of conversational piece to stick I in your, your coffee table or something, and people could be like... What's, what's with the wood square? And then you can start talking about Tetris. So you held that right way up on the first try. <laughs> I am learning. <laughs> I'd like to pretend I am at the very least. <laughs> But you also not here first, everybody. But also, shout, we have a couple of absolutely amazing day prizes, including one I know you've been waiting to talk oh about. Oh, my God. I've been wanting to talk about this all week because it's so cool. But first, yes. for a $50 minimum donation until the end of the marathon, you can win a one-of-a-kind GDQ banner designed by LLK. Features the uh, queen from Deltarune on it, as well as uh, Lady Dimitrescu mm. doing the, uh, the the classic, you know, Ojo Samado. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh together. Super cool design. Again, we print the one of each from every event. We send them out the winners. We don't reuse the designs. So you could take home a piece of GDQ history, $50 minimum singular donation. And shout, go ahead. I know right. you've been waiting. So I've had some people asking me about this all week because I've been kind of teasing it. So from Anonymous, we have 
This keyboard, and everybody's asking, what's up with the keyboard? Okay, so this keyboard is an Asus ROG Scope 10 keyless keyboard, Gundam Limited Edition. And it is part of a prize pack. For a $50 minimum donation, now through the er end of the marathon, you get the keyboard. You get a Gundam Edition ROG Strix uh, Scope, I'm sorry, no, Delta Gaming Headset, mm -hmm. also Gundam Limited Edition, with an extra set of ear cups. You get an ROG Sheath Gundam Limited Edition mouse pad. And to complete the peripheral set, if I can reach over here and find it, you get, ee, come on, come up right here. You get an Asus ROG Strix Impact 2 mouse, again, Gundam Limited Edition. I was so excited to see this when I came into the studio. I, I love it's, me some big robots. It's, and it, it, it's, it's excellent gear. It looks great. It functions oh. great. L listen, listen to the click of these uh, Cherry MX Blues. Oh, yeah. MX Blues. All the way. That's actually really good on microphone. Like, that is very audible. <laughs> you and it could be very yours. $50 minimum donation through the end of the marathon. Thank you, Anonymous, for sending this in. Yes, thank you so much to the person that sent this in. Again, just as a reminder, all of these together, when they were available as limited edition items, I think uh, retailed for somewhere around $400, that period's yeah. gone. You, you can't get these directly anymore. You could only get them secondhand. We got all of these available in so box to show you off. $50 minimum donation. Get it in there. As well as, of course, we have our grand prizes shout. We got to talk about them real quick. Indeed. Right behind me to start, we've got a trio of amazing replicas from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. Shout outs to Dave from Heroic Replicas. We've got this beautiful Hylian shield here, as well as a Dark Link styled Master Sword with a black pommel and silver accents and a beautiful engraved Triforce on the blade, as well as one of Dave's newest creations, a solid metal Megaton hammer. You can head over to gamesdonequick.com, see a picture of all three of them. Absolutely. And then from our friends at Skytech Gaming, you saw me talk about it a little bit earlier, we have the Mark IX, this absolute masterful machine here. 5800X CPU, 3070 Ti graphics card. It will handle whatever you want to throw at it and come back asking for more. $250 cumulative donation gets you into win both of these through the end of the marathon. You only have a couple of more hours. If you haven't gotten in $250 cumulatively throughout the event, now is the time. We have so many more amazing prizes that we weren't able to show you. And there is just so much great stuff. Now, before we go, there's one more thing I want to mention and uh, shout. Yeah. Uh, this this might uh, wind up being your last uh, segment for the marathon. And that I is just, true. I just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much for coming out and helping with all these prize segments. Uh, your help has been a value. Your, your presentation has been fantastic, and I'm, I'm really going to miss you, man. Thank, thank you so much, dude. It's an honor as always, and thank you, all of you again, for being so incredibly welcoming and gracious. Scent is a, a hard act to follow, an impossible <laughs> act to follow. I'm just doing my best to keep up with him here, and you have been a fantastic teacher. I'm still learning things about your philosophy, your presentation that are just so helpful. And thank you, man. Seriously. Hard, hard to follow and hard to work with, as chat will attest to. I but mean, you uh, gl sometimes. glad to have someone to work with. Now, everyone, <laughs> don't go anywhere because coming up next, we have, as mentioned before, one of the members of Speedrunning Royalty. Back when I got into speedrunning, back in like 2012. Everyone talked about Hoda Ruby and Hoda Ruby's ability in not just Link to the Past, but pretty much every game that was being run at the time. It is such an honor to be able to see them play live at a GDQ. I'm super excited. You definitely don't want to go anywhere. And I know that $3 million seems so far away right now, but I want to remind everyone that with me and you and this knife the goose found... Anything is possible. Okay, bye. Cut, cut, cut. No, not the knife cut. The, the bit.